Welcome to The Mountain Gardener with your host, Ken Lane. Gardening can be challenging, but with Ken's tips, tricks, and local advice, you'll reap huge rewards. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. And welcome to this week's edition of The Mountain Gardener. Your host, Ken Lane, talking about the landscapes of northern Arizona. Ugh, eventually, eventually it looks like it's going to be nice. But it looks like Sunday it kind of turns and actually becomes spring. I can't wait. I am tired. What is it? Uh, uh, s- like snowing every Tuesday? They kind of count on it since, uh, since like February, January? I am tired of cold. I want to break out the shorts or short sleeves. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm still wearing too many layers. But that is the mountains of Arizona. I mean, even on a bad day, it's just a few layers go out and you can still enjoy the day. So it, it, it just, the wind gets to me sometimes. Tuesday, the wind and the snow and the you know, it, it, just inconsistency. Warmed up a little better on Wednesday. Got better Thursday. Better Friday, and it looks like the week it just kind of ramps up. Next weekend, looks like 70 degrees. In fact, all the uh, color, my uh, Michelle Hyatt, she's my uh, color buyer. Any vegetable, herb, perennial, annual, anything that blooms, she's in charge of. She watches all of our grows, talks to all the farmers, who's got which crop coming in for us, which are we on track, or are we not? And uh, she is gearing up. I think she's got like... <laughs> Four trucks of color coming on Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's just midweek coming in big time uh, this coming week. We're loaded up for for bear this weekend, but, you know, the cold, it's just something about, I don't know, warm 60s to 70s that makes you want to go outside and garden. I did actually take off, uh, it, through the winter, I put these big foam covers over top of my outdoor faucets. Now, I've got a newer house. It has frost-free, you know, backflow prevented uh, faucets. They're up to date. They're up to code. Uh, but still, if we go sub-zero some years, they're out on the corners where they're exposed, they can freeze solid. And so I find if I cover them uh, just with these, it's a big, just big, it's like a, it's like a picnic cooler only for outdoor faucets. It goes right over top and cinches up and keeps the Keeps anything from freezing. I've never had to replace a outdoor faucet since, or, or spigot, since I've done that. And so it's been like 10 years since we went sub-zero, but I've just gotten in the habit. Every winter, I cover them. This week, they came off. So they're kind of a pain, to, pain in the derriere to work with because you're taking this off, you're competing with this, and you're trying to put your hose on. I've got quick, quick connects that get us on. I'm starting to water my containers. The pansies are growing like crazy. Calendulas are just blooming like crazy. Things are growing. Uh, so I'm, I'm having to water spot treat, cut the hose out. Um, and so I said, that's it. We're done with the bitter cold. We can still get frost. There still will be some, some snow, light flurries. That's going to happen through April. But we're done with that bitter, just freeze everything solid. Yeah, we'll get frost, but that's not freezing solid. And so my pansies are growing like crazy. They look really good. Uh, my um, uh, vinca or periwinkle for you folks from the south, it's the same plant, different names. Uh, vinca is in bloom. It's got I've got several colors. Comes in blue, purple, kind of a white uh, lavender color. They're all in bloom, this evergreen perennial that trails and goes through the garden. They are just happy with this weather. Even this week, they were happy. My um, hookra, your grandparents called them coral bells. They are growing. They're putting on new foliage. They are not blooming yet, but they're emerging from the from the ground, and they're putting, you can almost watch by the day, they're growing. My uh, peony is huge. So if you're thinking about planting a peony, oh, this is the perf. They love this kind of weather. They're starting to emerge from the ground. They've got their eyes, the, the, the stems coming up. So they're not in bloom, but they're erupting from the ground. And you can almost watch them. By the week, you're watching them double in size. So whether it's the Ito peony, the English peonies, whatever type, they all do really, really well here. So you folks in the Midwest, you know what your your grandparents grew peonies. Well, they... 
They only dreamed of the new colors coming out anymore. So every year, it's one of those kind of like roses. They create new colors, new varieties every year by crossbreeding or, or, or cross uh, grafting. You get these new colors, double pom pommed. They're just fun. They're fragrant. They're easy to grow. As long as you give peony drainage, they grow very consistently in full sun. They need at least. I would say six hours of sun to really bloom well. If you want to take a look at the colors, it's very, very easy. We're starting to upload all this inventory. As new plants come in, we put it on our website. So watersgardencenter.com, you'll see a shop button at the top. Or just If you're, if you're looking, you'll be, it'll hit you in the face. It's right there. So we've put uh, flowers, and we broke it down to annuals, perennials. Of course, peony are perennials. They come back, perennial and permanent. We'll start with P. They, they come back every year. So they come back from the ground every year. And mine are probably, I've got Ito peonies. That's a graft. They've crossed a tree peony with an English peony. And so you get this shrub peony. It's like, it's like it's on steroids. The flowers are as big as your hand. They're super fragrant and freakish colors. I mean, just you've never seen anything like this before. It's kind of fun. So it looks like next week, Boy, if this weather, if we get to 70, gardens are going to go crazy. And so they are, they are ready to go. The fruit trees are just wanting to go. You're just seeing the purple leaf plums, any of the prunus family, the plum family, is starting to bloom. All around town, you're seeing this tree with white to pink flowers. That is prunus or plums, the same plant, get Latin, Latin name and, and, and common name. Uh, they're starting to go. Well, apricots will be right behind them. Then it'll be nectarines right behind that. Then it will be the peaches and, and cherries. Then it will be the apples and pears. And it'll just keep rolling as we get to the end of April. And by then, everything is fruiting. Everything is growing. The lilacs are, are heavily, heavily budded right now. It's kind of exciting. I'm tired of the cold weather because that's what's holding things back. The soil temperature kind of holds things back, which is great for fruit trees. Anything that's edible, perfect. If you're putting ed you know, um, edible trees, shrubs, vines, grapes, figs, pomegranate, what, all, that, all that stuff that's edible, uh, blueberries, blueberries looking great. Uh, if you're thinking of those, this, you, you couldn't think of a better window to put those in. Put them in the ground before they leaf out, before they bloom, and you'll get better You'll get better fruit this year. So that's, that's, that's what it's. Here's another thing I should cover. So someone asked this at last weekend's um, garden class. They were doing some Google searching and found out they, they said, uh, you know, cut the tree in half when you plant it and then pick all the fruit off and then butcher the roots. I'm going, oh, oh, that's what your grandparents did with bare root plants. Don't, don't do that for, for, for today's plants. We, that's a technique we've abandoned. We don't do that anymore. So here, uh, if you're buying from Waters Garden Center, we've got a, a at least a five-year to ten-year-old tree. We only bring in older trees because they have to be a certain age to, to produce fruit. So they will produce fruit right there in the racks. Don't have to cut it back. In fact, what they're saying is leave the structure up so it has more foliage. The more foliage that tree or shrub has, the more photosynthesis it makes, the more carbohydrates it makes, the more roots it makes. More foliage equals more roots. Keep the foliage on. Even if it's got a, maybe it's it's uh, growing a little bit low, you want it to be pruned up a little bit so you can walk underneath the tree. Leave those lower branches this year, prune them up next year so we have more foliage. And then what they're recommending is you pick all the fruit off. It's A plant is either fruiting or rooting. They're not doing both. So if it's, got a, if it's loaded with apples or nectarines or peaches, it's, it's taking away from the root formation. Well, if it's a brand new plant in the ground, you, you kind of want all that energy to go into the root structure. Then next year, you get tremendous growth. Personally, what I do, uh, this is, again, my name's Ken. We're just friends. We're neighbors talking over the back fence. Here's what I do. I pick most of the fruit off, but I keep a few, you know, five, seven, eight, fruits, peaches, apricots on the tree because, you know, I want to, I planted it to taste it. I, I want some fresh fruit, but I'll pick most of it off. But if you left a few key ones on, I found the success rate is still off the charts. You're just fine, but don't let it load up with, with cherries and just be, become so weighted down because it is going to sacrifice some roots to pull that off. 
you could still keep it alive, but you really, in a, in a, in a hot, dry region, you really want some big, deep roots uh, before summer comes on. Be right back with Lisa Waters Lane with your garden questions after this. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane, owner of Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Join him every week for timely garden advice right for the gardens. Visit Ken where he can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heaths, Rosemary Creeper, Prescott Pansies, and Fanciful Forsythia. Fanciful Forsythia is a gorgeous spring shrub that explodes with masses of solar yellow flowers, followed by shiny green leaves. Every home should have one for sheer beauty, fall color, and gentle natural care. Shop the brightest spring bloomers in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Oh no, my pine trees look terrible. Never fear, Plant Protector is here. Plant Protector? From Waters Garden Center? My super strength protector destroys pine scale, bark beetle, and aphids. Just water into the soil and your trees are protected from the inside out for the year. Thank you, Plant Protector. You can always find Plant Protector at Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. You've been listening to Ken Lane, the Mountain Gardener. Green thumbs learned while working in the Family Garden Center. Now welcome back to the Mountain Gardener. And we are back. Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? Mm -hmm. And there's some value at just kind of tracking what's going on in the neighborhood. So that's this segment. And so we get questions from, oh, it's crazy how people communicate anymore. Mm -hmm. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, email is still alive and vibrant. It's actually number one question. Actually, number one is in person right here. Yeah. They bring in the twigs and they go, what, is that a problem? Going, yeah, that's a problem. That's those are aphids can scale. What are you talking about? That's going to kill the tree. Yeah, let's show you what to do. So that's number one. And we just package those and then share them. And so yeah. you bring that to. Uh, you know what my favorite one is? I want to know what your favorite one is. And then I want to know who your favorite man is. Oh, okay. Well, when they come in with the stick and they go. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is this? And I'm like. <laughs> Uh, Can we wait till I put some leaves on? <laughs> it was funny. We had uh, three people just pass their Arizona Certified Nursery Professional mm -hmm. degree. So this right. is a big, this is like the bar. Mm -hmm. So it's a four-hour test. It's crazy. It's three segments of just testing, A, B, multiple choice, design. Mm -hmm. And the last segment, segment number four, takes an hour. You line up a whole bunch of plants. Half of them are twigs. And so and they got to ID them. And tell, they got to have the botanical name, the common name, and size it. How does it grow? It's hard. They got to nail it. And you got to get at least 80% or you fail. Mm -hmm. And so we had Doug Arthur, uh, Amy Langley, and Michelle uh, Hyatt. All three passed that. In fact, did really well. Michelle and Amy got the highest score in the state of Arizona. This is a national, this is a not national state mm -hmm. test. And uh, they tied of all things. When you blend all the, you know, you rate, you score each segment exactly. and they blended them all together. They had the same exact score. It was amazing. I mean, yeah. the, the uh, uh, CEO of the, whatever, I think it's uh, Mesa community college uh, it scored like, it. And they're going, Oh, we've never seen this happen before, <laughs> but they were studying together. Yeah, they, they every night they'd come over to my office and mm -hmm. uh, just, just study, they'd go through all the exams so they yeah. could get it. So proud of them. Hey, way to go, Doug, Amy, and Michelle at Waters Gardens. And you guys are awesome. Yeah, they did great. Yeah. But, so yeah, back to where we were. I, I don't even know how I got there. <laughs> I'm just proud of them. I was writing a press release for Michelle's oh, thing, okay. letting people know because you know you want to make your people proud. Well, sure. Something you can send back to mom and dad. Because a lot, a lot of people have that designation in any garden oh, center. It's very unusual for one garden center to have one a Arizona certified nursery professional. We have five, so yes. you and I plus now three. I know. Uh, I look back crazy. and go, now what was my score? Was my score higher than I, their score? I was trying to find <laughs> mine, and it's been like I think I took mine and. 92 or back yeah, in the 90s way right. back in the day yeah. yeah so anyway yeah so you're an old 
<laughs> hey, you're right there with me, babe. <laughs> yeah. So be careful how, how old you're. You're just like you're a cute young thing, only 18 months younger, but you just look better than I do. Well, you yeah. still got your youth, youthful glow. Oh, just don't look close, and it's all good. <laughs> it's all in the lighting, right? I need a special glow. I got to tell you, honey. Every time you enter a room, my heart still goes pitter patter. Oh, truly, it kind of goes. This makes me leap. I don't know. I'd still marry you again. Oh, that's good. I keep, I keep married to you. Well, <laughs> some days. <laughs> hey. hey, we no. all have our days. Garden questions before yes. we go too deep down that path. We don't go down that bunny trail. So Tony's in Prescott. She has not seen any signs of life from her uh, crepe myrtle and her trumpet vine. Okay. So she wants yeah. to know, is there still hope? Should they be leafing at this yeah. point? And should she start watering at this point? So crepe myrtle, there's some things. Summer plants have zero interest in summer. I mean, have zero interest in spring. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I like, got that back. Wait. Zero interest in spring. They want summer. They want it to be 90, 100, 110. They're still good. Uh, spring plants love spring. Mm -hmm. They don't like summer so much. They're blooming. So lilacs and forsythias, uh, uh, quince, roses are even growing right now. Mm -hmm. These are spring things. They're erupting with new growth. The trees are willows, cottonwoods, erupting with growth right now. Right. Uh, but your summer trees like mimosa, they don't care. They, they have no interest in spring. They're waiting until it's warm. Mm -hmm. uh, crepe myrtles. And what was the other one? Trumpet vine. Trumpet vine. They are summer plants. They have zero interest in spring. They're going to wait. There'll be two months before crepe myr myrtle actually mm -hmm. wakes up. Grapes, they like the summer. Right. They form fruit in the summer. So they're going to wait. Whereas strawberries, they're starting to they're yeah. starting to grow right now. Yeah. So they're a spring thing. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, don't don't give up. Fertilize. That's the best thing you can do for all your landscape right now. Take that all-purpose plant food, that 744. It's like magic for anything that blooms. Mm -hmm. Really get them to grow for you. And then watering, uh, I would say wait to water those. Ground's still relatively moist, mm -hmm. and it's it's cool. Right. So the plants, they're not growing right now. So the crepe myrtles aren't. Now, things that are blooming, watch them. So purple leaf plum are starting to bloom. They're using water. Red buds. Red buds are starting to bloom. Mm -hmm. uh, so watch those things. As a leaf or flower, that's your cue. Ah, they're using water. Time to start uh, powering up the irrigation, maybe by hand. If you don't have the entire irrigation system on. Mm -hmm. But within a week or two, we'll have all the irrigation going. Just, just start so you balance out the landscape. Okay. Do we cover all of her stuff? I think so. Okay. We good. could go on, I'm sure. Oh. <laughs> but we'll answer Don's question. We have question. 10 minutes. Oh. Yeah. Don. So Don Save put me. in... <laughs> It, he needs to reseed some bald spots in his sod lawn that okay. he put in a couple of years ago. His question is, he doesn't really know what type of sod was okay. put in, whether it was a fescue okay. or Kentucky blue. He wants to know, is there a, <laughs> wants to know, is there a grass seed uh, that he can put in that will blend nicely? Yeah. So uh, there's two basic kinds of grass. If he's local, almost guaranteed it's a cool season grass. But just so everyone knows, because it's broadcast throughout Arizona. Um, there's also warm season or summer grasses. So Bermuda, that's what they grow down in Phoenix. Uh, buffalo grass, uh, blue gramas, summer grasses. They're only green in the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, they're brown the rest of the year. And so probably doesn't have that. You would pay sod. You, you don't want that in your yard. You want kind of want green year round if you're doing, mm -hmm. if you're going to commit to grass. And so probably you have a cool season grass. Those are going to be two types uh, probably we have two here at the garden center. One's called a drought hardy fescue. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very deep rooted. It's a little bit thicker blade, but green right through winter. And then we have the old fashioned Prescott blend. That's a bluegrass rye grass blend. Mm -hmm. um, if in doubt, blend the two together. No one over, I mean, a professional, maybe I could tell the difference. I have to actually look at the roots. Uh, if in doubt, it's spotted for a reason. Why did it spot? You might switch it over to the fescue anyway. Yeah. Deeper rooted, more robust. Maybe mm -hmm. there's a hot spot. Maybe there's dog spots. Yeah. Fescue. If you have kids or dogs, fescue is the way to go because uh, it just doesn't spot as well. Ball fields, we're using fescue on those because they take mm -hmm. the traffic better. But on the courthouse, they're using bluegrass. The front of magazines, that's going to be bluegrass uh, or, or Prescott blend because mm -hmm. that's it's just so soft you just want to roll around in it so anyway that's 
Come talk to us, bring a sample in. If you really want to ID it, cut out a square, put it in a box, bring it in. We'll look at the roots and go, this is a fescue or a, a bluegrass. Fescues have real deep roots. Bluegrass has rhizomes or, or runners that go off to the right. side. You can, you can probably ID it yourself now that you know, you know. <laughs> what to do. <laughs> well, let's try and sneak in another question. Um, Shannon's out in Chino Valley. She has a hedge of Fotinia that right now there's little black spots all yeah. over them. And then she's also noticing just probably just some cold damage. The leaves on the top look yeah. pretty iffy. She wants to know what she can do to whip that sucker back into shape. Super easy. And a lot of Fotenia are like this. They're kind of high maintenance plants. Mm -hmm. In fact, I would never introduce one into my yard. They're just so high maintenance. I'd rather use Cotoneaster or Silverberry. There's some mm -hmm. other choices that don't do that. Right. But they grow fast mm -hmm. and they're, they grow so fast they're cheap. So they, they, they fill in super quick. So usually they're going to be a lesser price, mm -hmm. but they're mildew induced, which is probably the spot from last, uh -huh. last year is probably powdery mildew or leaf spot from last year. It will spread onto your plants this year. So come in and get a bottle of revitalize. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. leaf, leaf disease thing. Mm -hmm. Spray the plant and then for, feed it with all purpose plant food. That seven, four, four, four food We'll get it to bud up and get all that new red growth. The problem is if you don't put the revitalize on, the second it has green growth, the spotting will come right on a new growth. So it's kind of a tag. You want to do tag team. Come bring a sample. We'll help you out with that. It's super easy to solve. So gotcha. we are out of time. Ken and Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. Be right back. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. The Mountain Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Garden Center. Listen each week as he answers timely garden questions unique to mountain gardens. The colors of spring are bursting at Waters' 59th Spring Open House. Talk directly to our farmers as they show off the newest flowers, brightest evergreens, and freshest new bloomers. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday is impromptu garden classes, plant garden giveaways, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 59th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. Waters Garden Companion plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heath, Prescott Pansies, Fanciful Forsythia, and Rosemary Creeper. Rosemary Creeper is a local favorite for rock gardens, ground cover, or spilling over retaining walls. But not all local rosemary is created equal. This one lives where others die. Knowing you can also use it in the kitchen is sheer bliss. Shop the freshest organic herbs in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You've been listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Join the conversation every week as he answers timely garden questions. Email Ken a question directly from your phone to his desktop through the web at watersgardencenter.com. That's Waters with two T's, GardenCenter.com. Now welcome back your host, Ken Lane. Every week we have a garden class. And so this weekend it's, it's how to plant. What's the best way to plant in the mountains of Arizona where we have heavy clay soil, rocks just emerge out of the ground. How do you stake a tree? How do you, how do, you do that and have better success, better growth, stronger growth? Great for privacy screens. Great for, if you just want to fill in fast, a living wall, you want it to fill in fast, this is the class, this is the technique. Well, last week's class, uh, I taught that one, and uh, a question came up, and I thought it was worthy of sharing. And so they were asking uh, container gardens on either side of a garage wall. Uh, that was the idea I shared. This is what I do. Some of these garage walls are so sterile man they're just so big i know the rv fits in there but it's just a great big old wall and it needs something living breathing soft colorful to be in there and and big glazed pots work and the advice i gave folks was uh, they look so big here at the garden center containers you get them home and things just seem to shrink a big a tree here the tree rack looks so big and you put it in the ground where did it go? I wanted a shade tree. What, what happened? It, things shrink when they get, your, your home is so big. Your yard is so large that it just starts to swallow up these plants, these containers. Well, especially in a garage wall, you need bigger plants and then or, or bigger uh, uh, containers. And then your plant 
should be two times the size of your pot. And so I was giving examples of plants that look good. I use Indian hawthorn. It's an evergreen, so it looks good year-round. It's got spring blooms, fragrance, uh, early spring. It's sun tolerant. It loves the heat. Just let it soak up that that sun on that south-facing wall, which is where mine are. It's south-facing. It's like brutal. You need plants that can handle that. And I wanted evergreens. So I've got another one I use, uh, Eliagnus, or silverberry is a common name. It's a native. It's a really good-looking native. It's an evergreen, broadleaf evergreen. Big shrub. Gets up the size of your, your head. And so I've got, and it has a gold edge to it. And so it looks gold, looks really good with blues, earth tones. I happen to have mine in a mustard color because it's got the same colors of foliage. It just come, brings it all together. A really great container, looks good with plants or without. It's glazed with, with a bright color. And sometimes, I mean, we, we deal with so much beige here. The, the shingles are, are beige, the trim is beige, the stucco is beige, the rock is beige. You just need some style, something that breaks up all that brown, uh, especially if you're coming from areas where they have lots of grass or lots of trees. It just looks too dusty. And so a bright colored pot just adds a, just snap a color, just looks so good with plants. You could use deciduous plants in those, like lilac. They're about to go into bloom. If you had a big pot and you're using things like a dwarfed lilac, uh, they'll grow for decades in that kind of pot. Now, lilac typically are really huge plants with a huge deep root structure. That's why they're so drought hardy. I mean, every yard should have a lilac. Deer don't eat them. Havelina, leave them alone. They have fragrant blooms. They've, uh, but they're too big for most containers. But the new dwarfed series, they call them bloomerang series. There's uh, purple, dark purple. There's a pink, dark pink. Basically, they're, they're half the size with the same flower. And they repeat bloom. They bloom in spring, take a break, bloom in summer, and then keep blooming through fall. They're amazing lilacs. Uh, the flowers are a little bit smaller. They're not quite the size as the ones you've grown, the great big, you know, eight, 10 foot lilac, but they're darn close. And they make up for the size with just quantity. They have more, uh, more flowers on them, and the same fragrance. It's a great plant, and that one would grow easily in a larger container for many, many years. And it's got some size to it. It gets up to Oh, three, four feet in size. You can easily keep it trimmed. Super easy to maintain. A forsythia, that's a bright gold type of, of shrub right now. That one is not as aggressive as lilac. It would easily grow into, in a container, a larger one. Uh, I am going to shift on my back patio. I've got a, a deck above the back patio that's a story and a half high. It is, it's like a bird's nest. It's way up there. It's got huge posts that come right down. It's kind of, looks like it's on stilts almost. It looks kind of funny. It's sturdy. It's not, it's, it just, it looks, it feels, it makes the environment where the grill and the hot tubs and the, 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 the furniture, just, it, it feels stilty. feels like something's up there. And so I'm going to take big glazed, very decorative white pots, formal, Outside, I'm going to use white formal pots outside. It's got a decorative pattern to it. Then I'm going to plant Italian cypress. Italian cypress is a tall, real skinny, but tall evergreen. It looks like a juniper. It doesn't put a berry on. It has a little, little pine cone on it, but it's very handsome. It's got a blue-green color to it, but I'm going to put those right in front of the post with these great big, I'm going to get a 15-gallon, something that's like instantaneous and soften up those poles. I've got two, two egregious kind of footers there. I just want to hide those. I just want to hide them. And so I think it'll dress it up, that formal white, a nice formal looking tall, really tall Italian cypress. It's going to be a game changer for this, this uh, summer's barbecues. Got more in store for you. Lisa Waters Lane coming in after this. Mountain Gardener, your source for timely garden advice right for higher elevations. Guaranteed to make a difference in your yard this season. Gardening and you don't know where to start? Waters In-Home Garden Service comes to you and identifies what you have and how to make it better. 
design advice, water strategies, vegetable and flower gardens, soil and food needs, and problem solving. Always problem solving. You'll instantly be a better gardener. All for just $200 of expert time with a coupon to fill your garden dreams without ever leaving home. In-home garden consultations from Waters Garden Center. We can be at your home this week. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Prescott Pansies, Mountain Heath, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Oklahoma Redbud. Oklahoma Redbud grows to just 16 feet tall. This local native is super easy to grow. Vibrant red flowers cloak the branches of early spring. Luscious heart-shaped leaves emerge with a soft pink tinge that matures to a vibrant green. Shop the brightest blooming trees in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You're listening to The Mountain Gardener with local expert Ken Lane. Mountain gardening is very rewarding with a few of Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts sure to turn your thumbs even greener. Now welcome back to The Mountain Gardener. All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. Lisa comes each week with your, well, not garden choir, that was segment two. This is like all about you, just Keep your, up, Mr. I know, <laughs> changing hats too fast, <laughs> doggone technology. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Lisa comes each week and just shares her garden opinions because I just value your opinions. Oh. Thanks. I do, actually. So speaking of hats, I see you have your Prescott Badger hat on. Hey, go Badgers. Go so uh, PHS. I saw the other day on Facebook that hey, we're coming up on our 30th. I know. You're coming up on your 30th. I think 40th. 40? Yeah. No. 81, 81, 91, 2001, 2011, 2020. Yeah, 40 years. Oh, my god. Which means I married a classmate of Prescott High School. But I was a younger year. You were the year below. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were a junior. I'm a senior. We actually didn't start dating until college. Sure. So we ran in different sort of circles. I was a, a jock, football, you know, basketball. Mr. So Spirit, just, if I remember correctly. I, I, if the I, yearbook is correct. School is fun. <laughs> I mean, school for me was just social, outgoing. Uh -huh. Education was optional, but it was just fun. So yeah. I did okay. You know, I kind of got B's all the way around. Couldn't have got I could have gotten A's if I didn't hang out with so many people, but I would hang out. We play high schools for. I mean, back in the day, 81, we had a green bar computer in the in the principal's office that the nerds could go in and play Dungeons and Dragons. And we would go in like Ooh. five or six of us and, and play this game on green bar. No screen, just that's how old it was. Mm -hmm. uh, when we finally got computers at Prescott High School, they were cassette decks. You would record on cassette decks, yes. and then if you sneezed, you would lose all your data. So I, I was just like I took a semester <laughs> of computer, and we had to create. That was back when they thought programming would be really important, not just running. It's still it did well, it become, is, but we're not, not all language. programmers, so yeah. we had to. And I had mine all on this cassette deck, and it just it got eaten alive by the tape machine. Oh, I lost it ate the tape. Thing. Yeah, I was in tears. <clears throat> I was also in a magnet uh, class, so I just put my in, in my backpack with my magnets. And, you know, they, no, not really, not really. I just, no, I do. That is how when a computer uh, poops out here, I'll take it home, smack the hard drive with a hammer, and then put a magnet on it, uh -huh. just so the data is just because so, you never know. I don't know. I don't even know if that's smart or not smart, but it's know. what I've always done. I but I know. bet we'll hear whether it's smart. Or not <laughs> Someone smart. will tell us. You're an idiot, Ken. What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> anyway, well, this is about gardening, not about our 40-year right. reunion. <laughs> I was just that floored me. I thought it was 30. Now you told me 40, and the whole I'm just. I tell you, in my eyes, you only graduated 20 years ago. <laughs> Does that help you? No. <laughs> okay, we're gonna move on to plants because it is. Okay. Wonderful springtime. The weather is going to eventually cooperate with us. Yep. Um, we've had some snow and some crazy stuff, but you know, a lot of your spring plants are just going, I don't care. It yeah, can snow a little bit. True. It can be a little cold. I'm coming back. So yeah. 
uh, perusing through the garden center this morning, I saw a lot oh. of real pretty springtime perennials. Oh, perennials, and things that come back every year. Every Perfect. year. So I thought I'd hit up a couple of those. Um, one of the first ones I saw, which really caught my eye, uh, it's really cute, especially for like Easter. It was really cute. It's an Armeria or a thrift. I'm sorry, a thrift. So it's called Dreamaria Dreamland Thrift. So it looks like a little um, bunch of green grass, but it has these really big, pretty little cool. pink flowers yeah. sticking out of it. Yeah. And the great thing about it is it, it blooms now through fall. Oh, you're, I did not know that. This huh. one does. Really? It's so, got to be a new variety. It is, is a it? new variety. Ah. New variety. What's it called again? Dreamaria Dreamland Thrift. Dream Thrift. <laughs> Dream twice thrift. Yeah. So yeah, great pretty perennial. and big pink Is that sun or shade area? That is sun. Sun. Good. So, like and, a grass. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, it'd be so cute along a perennial border or mm -hmm. on the edge of a pot. If you were into container sure. gardening, it'd be terrific. Raised beds there. right there Raised at the front beds. edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of uses for it. And just, just this really cute little green mound with big pink flowers coming out of it. Loved it. Um, it all, we also have the Cottontail Thrift, which is the white one. So it blooms spring through summer. So you're not going to get as long a blue time, but that's still Only a long time. Only blooms half a year. That right. perennial sucks. <laughs> but that one has the white flower on it, a little bit smaller. Yeah. But how cute if you mix the two together. Be really, really This attractive. is when you see the new varieties of plants coming mm -hmm. in for 2021. Right. They're starting to show every week. We get truckloads of, of brand new plants mm -hmm. and old established plants. But right. the new things are like candy to gardeners, like Christmas. It's true. It's fun, fun, fun. Uh, speaking of candy. Yes, so we candy tough. Candy tough. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> So candy tuft is one of those great spring bloomer. I put a bunch, I, I redid some of our pots and I put a Mexican feather grass. I put a candy tuft and then I put a, a hookera, a dark kind of yeah, reddish hookera in with it. And it's beautiful right now. Yeah. And I have it right by the driveway. So as you drive in, you kind of announce it's, it's gone through our last you. two snor storms. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And we have Havelina that's been uh, mm -hmm. ravaging our gardens. They have been. They have not bothered that. So those are so Havelina they were, proof. They were kind of my test victims because yeah. I wanted to make sure they would make it. Yeah. Because I'm not putting pansies out there because I'll eat those suckers. And they like pansies and violas. Oh, my gosh. And yeah. lettuce. Any kind of kale. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So if you have a little bit of a shady, shady area or filtered light area, um, we got some delphinium in, some blue mountain delphinium, and it gets uh, 18, 20 inches tall. Yeah. Beautiful blue blooms yeah. on it. Blue blooms. Say that three times. Blue now. blooms. Blue blooms. <laughs> blue, 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 blue. Never mind. And it's just gorgeous right now. Uh, just starting to open the buds. So it would be really pretty for a long time. We also got one in, uh, a hookera in, that I hadn't seen before. It's called Little Cuties. Well, that's a great name. Right. Little Cuties Shimmer Hookera. Ooh, Say little, that little Jimmy. Little Jimmy. <laughs> little Cuties Shimmer. Okay. Now you've messed up. Yeah. Come to the garden center. We'll show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the leaf on it is probably a little bit smaller than your normal hookeras that have the really big leaves. Yeah. But what's terrific about this one is the bloom on it is a really dark pink, really, really? showy blue. Huh. Now, so same normal mm -hmm. kind of hookera or coral bells right. kind of flower, but bright pink. Normally they're like white, kind of boring. Yeah, they're kind of boring. You don't usually get hookera for the bloom. You can right. get them more for the, the leaf structure. But exciting. this is a beautiful color on it. Yeah. Actually really nice. I was very impressed by it. Uh, and there's another one that was sitting right by. It's called Forever Red Hookera. Um, the stems are red. And the leaves are just a beautiful, beautiful red. Yeah. And be really cool to contrast those. Even if you did like a lime green hookra and the red hookra, it'd be gorgeous. If you've never that. grown hookra, it's in all the garden magazines right mm -hmm. now. You're planting it for the foliage. It's it's a perennial, almost evergreen. Ours kind of pooped out with that two foot snow. Yeah. Kind of we had to clean them up, and now they're starting to grow yeah. again. Mm -hmm. The crazy long foliage, mm -hmm. and then crazy long blooms. Right. They'll bloom spring through summer mm -hmm. through fall. Yeah. Uh, so they're just an amazing perennial for the mountains of Arizona. They like this cool spring. Mm -hmm. They like the mountains of Arizona. It's so easy to grow. The other one is the songbird uh, columbine yeah, right now. So classic. songbird is nice because you get the pink, the blues, the reds uh, all on one plant instead of just yellow or just blue. Yeah. 
but pretty right now. And this is their time to shine. Full blown. Mm -hmm. So, and, and Columbine, that's a, that's an Arizona native. So the yellow variety, yellow is Arizona native. Songbird is everything. Everything. <laughs> Everyone wants songbird. So yeah. why, why have just yellow when you can have all the colors of the rainbow? Mm -hmm. Very true. So a lot of pretty perennials in right now. And then a couple of uh, succulents that caught my eye. So we got some gopher plant in. So for people who have animal pest problems, javelina, deer, uh, gopher plant is an amazing plant. Yeah. It's amazing for if you have a really hot spot as well, super to put in there. Um, it's got a really neat texture to it. So it's a, just a great plant for out in your yard, especially if you're doing xeriscape and the bloom on it. It's like a bright green yellow. chartreuse, yeah. bright color. looks like an gorgeous. Arizona prehistoric perennial up about knee high or so. It's a great okay. plant. Bulletproof. You can't, you can't you kill it. You a family and nothing touches it. Ken Elisa Lane, the Mountain Gardener's great segment, Lise. Thanks for sharing the perennials that you can buy and plant in the gardens right now in spring. We'll be right back after this. Look for more tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts through Ken's website. Podcast the show, read his weekly garden column, or follow him on Facebook and Instagram at watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Waters Garden Companion Plants for March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heaths, Rosemary Creeper, Prescott Pansies, and Fanciful Forsythia. Fanciful forsythia is a gorgeous spring shrub that explodes with masses of solar yellow flowers, followed by shiny green leaves. Every home should have one for sheer beauty, fall color, and gentle natural care. Shop the brightest spring bloomers in store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. Look, if your mom, wife, or mother-to-be enjoys dead cut flowers and the peace that comes when dining with all those kids, then by all means, take her to your favorite buffet rather than some piece of plastic. But if she really loves her garden, a gift card from Waters makes perfect sense. In reality, you're giving her 90 minutes of peace and quiet while she shops for her own flowers. Waters Garden Center, 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott, the place where people who love their gardening moms love to shop. Welcome to the Mountain Gardener with Ken Lane. Gardening in the mountains is different. Listen to Ken's tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts guaranteed to make your gardens more beautiful than ever this year. Now for better advice that works locally, welcome your host, Ken Lane. By next weekend, we're going to be outdoors, enjoying sunsets, sipping wine, watching some iced tea, sipping coffee, watching hummingbirds. It's going to be outdoors. It's this cold indoor sipping tea in front of the fireplace, that's going to end. We're going up in the 70s. It's going to feel like spring, like just, just like that. And it's going to stay that way. Now, we can get some more cold, but it's going to, it's going to be much, much nicer. And I can't wait. Going outdoors, what's going to happen is, all of a sudden, your neighbor's going to be there too. They're outdoors. They're enjoying a barbecue. They're enjoying the fire pits. They're out there. Yeah, Privacy is going to be a real issue. Uh, you'll find that your neighbors over the winter put hot tubs out, and now they're watching you grill on your back patio, or, or you can hear them talking. Sometimes you just want not. You just want some privacy. You just want some. This is my secret garden. I don't want to worry about COVID anymore, or stress, or shootings, whatever populace has crazy things. I just want to go watch the hummingbirds and watch a sunset. And that's what we're, that's what we're famous for. Uh, sometimes you need more plants to kind of soften or even to highlight a vista. You can use plants as picture frames to frame Granite Mountain, Thumb Butte, uh, Grass, um, Glassford Hill. Uh, so you can use them to watch that vista, the, the San Francisco peaks. And so that's how you, that's what a good design does. But I thought I would touch on a, a few uh, plants that I like to use for just creating a living wall and how to do it. And so we've got an entire section we just set up with lots of, we call them upright evergreens. There's lots of junipers, cypress, cedars, even pines, spruce, uh, deodor cedars, Arizona cypress. These are all fast growing evergreen plants. They get big fast. And so you, you can do that. Now, what, what my take, what I try to do in my own gardens, 
I don't want it to look real formal. I don't want it to go, oh, there's something egregious over there. That's why I planted this wall of living green. Yeah, you can do that on a busy road front where you got traffic or headlights or noise. Okay, that, that makes sense. Everyone knows what you're doing. But if it's a backyard where they just have chickens and they're always just noisy and you're trying to cut down the noise, the dust, or just they're always out there enjoying the pool, or that RV is just the shed is ugly looking, or that contractor is got a debris pile that's just offensive you want it to disappear i like looking instead of planting all the same exact thing i really like creating a garden so mixing up the green patterns so that it looks like it's more natural like i'm not obviously trying to hide something back there i am but i mixed up i put a pine tree and i put a juniper let's say a spartan juniper it's rich green color I've got an Austrian pine, this long needled pine that looks like a ponderosa, only it holds its foliage right, thick right down to the ground. Fast growing, 18, 24 inches a year. It's a fast growing pine tree and very few problems for as bugs, that kind of stuff. I, I use myself Spartan junipers quite a bit because I've got a lot of blue. I have a lot of, I'm um, in that chaparral area, uh, pinion pines and Manzanitas and Ceanothus and all that native shrubbery. Um, I needed more green. I had enough Arizona blue. I wanted some green. So it just has, has this pop where I can go in between the oak trees and go boom, green. It makes it look designed, garden-esque, like a private secret garden. That also, another technique just to, to eliminate that really formal, you know, obviously there's a wall here kind of feel, is don't plant in straight lines. Zigzag, plant in odd numbers. This is a technique they teach you first and foremost at any design school, architect school, is plant in, in tri um, triangular shapes. So think triangles and zig zigzags across the yard and then plant odd numbers. So don't go with two or four or six. Go with threes, fives, sevens because odd numbers feel more natural. Your eye, you're just, just something about... Your radar just naturally picks up going, oh, that's really formal. Look at that. Just exactly, you know, they're six feet apart, exactly down the line. I wonder what's on the other side of that. So if you used odd numbers and zigzagged them, different plant material, maybe even different textures, different colors, different heights, that's a good feel. So now you're in the back enjoying that hot tub, sipping some tea, uh, just just uh, enjoying friends over for, for on the back deck. And now it just feels more natural. Now, if you want to form actual walls, which there are places for that, we use this often out in Paulden, Chino Valley, Presque Valley, the bigger properties, Coyote Springs, Paquito Valley, um, where we need to cut the wind. So we'll, we'll plant these big evergreens that grow fast on the southwest side because typically the southwest is where the wind comes from in spring. And so we'll plant this row of Arizona cypress. This is a big plant. It grows wild. Uh, it's throughout northern Arizona, 25 feet by 12 feet. I mean fast. Within five years, we're talking big, to, you know, 12-foot wide plant that's going to keep that wind up high, cut down that dust, really block that, you know, corral over there that you just don't want to see anymore. Um, so it's, 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 that's how we use that. Or down a, a fence line where you're along a road and your, your house is up here, you just want that road to kind of disappear while you're looking over your, your vista. So there's a way to design with that. If you're doing a living wall and you want it to be overlapping pattern up to, let's say, six, eight, 10 feet. So this is a 25 foot plant, Arizona cypress. Uh, there's some big junipers like that, Italian cypress. There's, uh, there's a lot, junipers, pines, you could do this with. To figure out what the spacing is, how where, what should I space these out? Take its width, so 12 feet, divide it in half. So if you planted Arizona cypress every six, maybe eight feet, cheat it a little bit, uh, you're going to get an over, as they grow, they're going to overlap up to that higher, up above head height and just be solid. You won't see... You can't get through it. It'll be so thick. A, a true living green wall. You could do that with shrubs too. So uh, red tip votinia. That's probably the number one seller. It's overdone a little bit. I, I have 
<laughs> hundreds that we sell, uh, big ones, small ones, and everything in between. Um, that one gets 12 by 12. So it's 12 foot evergreen. It's a broad leaf evergreen. The new growth is red, and that's why they call it red tipped photinia. If you're planting those, again, the, the width is going to be 12, the height is going to be 12, the depth is going to be 12. This is just a monstrous big shrub. You can trim them, uh, or you can just let them go wild and have, it, have this overlapping pattern. Again, you would take that one, 12 foot wide, shrub, it's going to grow 12 feet, bring it in about every 6 to 8 feet or so, just divide that ultimate width that says on the tag, divide it in two, and that is your spacing, and that's how you'll get that tight overlapping branch pattern so you can't see through it. Otherwise, if you space it out, you might you can still see through it some, and it won't fill in as quickly for you. And so another technique I've used often, especially if we're trying to stretch the, the landscape budget, uh, what I'll do is I'll take one big one, let's say Deodor cedar. This is probably the fastest growing of all the evergreens. Uh, we've got some in the nursery now that are, I don't know, 8, 10 feet tall. They're, they grow, this is a 50-foot plant with 25-foot width. This is a monster, way too big for most places, big properties where it needs to, be, where it needs to go. But I'll take a big specimen. And let's say I'm looking across the street at a neighbor, and I see their dining room all the time, and they're always there looking at me. And so I just want something to kind of hide that, maybe a couple things. I'll take one great big specimen and I'll plop it right there where the most, where I really want privacy right now. And then I'll plant some smaller ones off to the side. Let them, eventually they'll all fill in and be big. But at least now I've got one great big one. I put all the money into that one and I'll, I'll cheat it on some of the smaller things. And it's a way to get privacy now, but in the long term, I've got even more down the road. Let's see, do I have enough time here? Another technique, I got 15 seconds. I'll plant some fast growing stuff real close to the house. Uh, let's say aspens, uh, cottonwoods, willows, and they're going to be sacrificed. So I'm planting spruce, slower growers, some of your juniper slower growers out there. And that's where I permanently want them to be eventually, but they won't be big for five, 10 years. I'll plant some fast growing deciduous stuff up close where it's going to be it's going to triple in size this year and i know i'm going to cut those things down five ten years from now so it's sacrificing i want privacy now with this and while i wait for those to grow and then when those are finally big enough i'll cut these down and there's a way to to make that work for you on the landscape so you got a few ideas there if you need privacy come talk to us if you need privacy be right back after this you're listening to local garden expert Ken Lane, the owner of Waters Garden Center. He can be found throughout the week at Waters Garden Center, located in Prescott, 1815 Iron Springs Road. Thanks for tuning in to The Mountain Gardener. If life is a bowl of cherries, why not make them the biggest, sweetest cherries ever? Waters Garden Center is super excited to introduce our new organic fruit and vegetable plant food. This fertilizer has the bonus of added calcium that gives fruit trees and veggies an extra boost to produce healthy, abundant crops. Feed your plants now to help them thrive and grow more fruits than ever in just $27 for a 20-pound bag. Save natural, organic, fruit and vegetable plant food only at Waters Garden Center. Waters Garden Companion Plants of March are Oklahoma Redbud, Mountain Heat, Rosemary Creeper, Fanciful Forsythia, and Prescott Pansy. Prescott Pansy's giant three-inch flowers thrive in extreme March gardens. Large velvety blooms dazzle with radiant colors of blue, violet, yellow, and variations of stripes that look like smiling faces and love being planted in March. Shop the brightest spring flowers in-store or online at watersgardencenter.com in Prescott. You've tuned in to The Mountain Gardener with local garden expert Ken Lane. Join him each week as he answers timely garden questions that are sure to make a difference in your gardens. Now welcome your host, Ken Lane. Let me wrap up some of the ideas of the show this week. I, I was talking about privacy screens. I mean, before I leave that subject, let me just mention too, if, if you need help with that, take a picture of what you're trying to hide 
and then a measurement. You can't see on an iPad or a phone what the distance is, but just pace it off, get as close. We can help you space that out. We'll design so many gardens right there in the garden aisles. Again, 65% of the garden center is open, just mainly for COVID. Easy, people can bubble, get around each other. We've still got this thing with us. Um, it, it, just, it, it also helps us to design gardens. It's like a double plus. Safer, outdoors, bright, airy, windy, and we can des- space to design. We've got an entire section of nothing but privacy stuff. If you want to do some homework, uh, a great local resource. Uh, we post all of our signage online. When we get a plant, let's say we just got a truckload of evergreens, just came in, just unloaded, and, and the day that that thing, before they're even unwrapped, before they're in stock, they were already uploaded to our website. And the sign that you read here at the Garden Center, these aren't just national tags. We customize that for local. This is how you're going to see a Deodor cedar grow here in the mountains of Arizona. All of it, the mountains being Chino Valley, Prescott Valley, I mean, Cottonwood, Camp Verde. We're, we're all the same. Uh, yeah, it might be five degrees warmer or cooler, but we're all the same. We have the same water, same wind, same, same sun. It's the same. Uh, but it's not the same as Oregon or Michigan or other parts of the country. So things tend to dwarf here. They're about, they'll grow about 20, 30% smaller than they do other places. Our sun is definitely more intense. So we put how much sun that plant can take here, what we've experienced here. And we post that on our signage here at the Garden Center, and then we upload that to our website. So you go to watersgardencenter.com, or I also I bought a URL, a, a name, Top 10 Plants. I can't believe that thing was still open. But I bought that plant, that URL points you to the right place. And you can research the evergreens. Just go to Plants, Trees, Evergreens, right there. And it'll tell you what size, how they're going to grow, how wide. You can do some math yourself. Uh, we, we get orders every day. You can order online, pick it up the next day or whatever. But we're finding that more people are using that as a research tool. So just before I came on the show, someone was buying gift cards for a friend. I don't know why. Mailed them right off. They're going to come pick them up, whatever. Uh, Sold uh, a boatload of soil this week online. And so they just ordered it, and they come have their gardener pick it up. That's how you use it. But really, I think the benefit for you all, if you're looking at some garden plants, you can now have a local resource with actual size recommendations, sun recommendation, pH, how, how it's going to grow, fast, evergreen, shade, sun, and you can see what it looks like. Uh, we don't take actual pictures of the plant and put it up there. We have stock photos. It's too hard to get living plants. It's hard enough to keep all this stuff online. It's like for a little company, it's, it's, it's a chore, but we've gotten pretty good at it. But that's a local source for you. If you need help with that, uh, getting that spacing right is critical for privacy. So that's where I find folks make the biggest mistakes. And then we can give you some design tips. What goes together? What looks good together? How do, how do I have less of a wall and more of a garden in my backyard so I can just feel safe and secure, just enjoy what I've created back here in my own backyard? Ken and Lisa Lane, we camp out here at Waters Garden Center throughout the week, and we love talking to fans of the show. I was raised in a nice house with my family. Now I'm out on my own and have my own apartment. I love my cute little place, but there's something I do miss. I miss my mom's garden in the backyard. It was so special because over the years I was growing up, I watched her give those flowers and plants such a personal loving touch and so much color. I miss it so. Well, Guess what? I just visited my local garden center and they gave me some great ideas. And now, because of them, when I look out my patio window, I see the beautiful planter they suggested, teeming with flowers, bright Arizona flowers. Looking at those flowers gives me such a nice feeling. And it's almost like being with mom in the backyard all over again. Want help with planting? It's all online at plant-something.org. Brought to you by the Arizona Nursery Association at plant-something.org. You'll love it, too. 
The colors of spring are bursting at Water's 59th Spring Open House. Talk directly to our farmers as they show off the newest flowers, brightest evergreens, and freshest new bloomers. Friday, we show off this year's showiest plant introductions. Saturday and Sunday is impromptu garden classes, plant garden giveaways, and drawings. Join the garden fun at Waters Garden Center's 59th Spring Open House, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 1815 Iron Springs Road in Prescott. If you want a more fruitful garden, increase success in your landscape that just feels better, then tune in every week to The Mountain Gardener. Years of tips, tricks, and garden shortcuts are guaranteed to make your gardens nicer than ever. Listen to this podcast or read Ken's weekly garden column by visiting watersgardencenter.com. That's waters with two T's, gardencenter.com. Thanks for tuning in.